Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. Um, this is part two of the uh, end scale switching layout. In part one, I left you with uh, the modules, uh, the frame and the top had been completed. I showed you how I uh, nailed that, nailed and glued that all together, and uh, they, they're all dry now. They, they look really good, nice and flat, no twist or any kind of warping, so it looks pretty good. All right, so in this video, I'm going to cover doing the uh, leg pockets on the bottom. Now, um, I mentioned in the first video that I had these legs left over from my last layout, the last layout my wife and I started building. And unfortunately, we had to tear it apart because we were moving at the time, and it just wasn't feasible to take the old layout with us. And we were really only in the track laying phase of it, so. Fortunately, we really just lost out on throwing away a bunch of wood and uh, some cork road bed, and that was about it, because that's uh, I had already glued down the, the road bed. But none of the track had been put down, so luckily we didn't lose any track or anything in the uh, throwing it away. Anyways, I did retain these legs, and I've got uh, 16 of them, because uh, the old layout was four different modules. In this case, we're only building the two modules, so we really only need eight of them. So we're going to reuse them. And, and really, it's just two by two material with a what I call a blind nut. Some people call them uh, jam nuts, or, or uh, not jam nuts, but um, uh, they'll call them um, stop nuts or something. I forget. Uh, I've heard people refer to them as something else, which is not the proper term. Um, uh, but anyways, it's really a blind nut. That's what I've always known them as. Anyways, got a carriage bolt, and then there is a nut that is here in addition to the blind nut that's been pounded into the bottom. And this is what I would call a jam nut. And the idea is when you get the, when you get the foot, so it would be like this. Wherever you get the foot, uh, rotate in or out to the proper height so you've adjusted the leg length. Then you run this nut up tight against the blind nut and it locks it in place. And as you can see, I, I cannot turn that because it's been tightened. So, so that's, uh, they're basically uh, adjustable legs is what they, what they become. So um, this was two by two stock material. Um, no, I can't take that back. This might have started off with its life as a two by four that I cut down. Um, I cut it down to give it a, a good, uh, well, the sharp corners aren't as important, but what I really wanted was I wanted a piece that was perfectly the same dimension, both uh, this width and this width. So, when I measure it this way, it's the same as when I measure it this way. And in this case, it's just over an inch and a half. It's about an inch and uh, nine sixteenths. So what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to create a pocket at inch and five eighths. I want to give a little extra space there. And that little bit of play is not going to be a big deal because one, um, you're going to want to be able to get these legs in and out of those pockets easily without it being too loose. Um, but also, I uh, think, compensate for wood expansion and contraction. It's a fairly humid time of the year right now. It's, um, we're only on the first week of September in Virginia. And I know that this wood is probably um, a little more swollen than, <clears throat> than it would be in the cold weather. But I'm gonna have to compensate for that. So I want to make sure the pocket will fit it at its biggest versus its smallest. So anyways, um, Again, saved you the uh, agony of watching me cut up uh, half-inch plywood on my table saw. I've got this uh, piece here, uh, same width as the sides, and I'm going to cut this up to make the pockets, and I'm going to move the camera and show you a little bit better. I've got a uh, table saw sled that, I, uh, that I've had for years and has served me very well for projects like this, so uh, I'm going to move the camera and show you what I'm doing here. Okay, as you can see, this is a, just a standard table saw sled. If you've done any woodworking or watched any other woodworking videos, you've probably seen these used. The idea is that it gives you a nice platform that you can saw up uh, material on the table saw. And, uh, and, and especially when it's small, um, it's a little more um, secure doing it this way. So, uh, so what we're going to do is... Um, <clears throat> What I need to do first off is just cut this in half. It'll make it a little easier to deal with. Okay, roughly, roughly. 
Okay, so um, like I said, our dimensions on our dimensions on our leg here is uh, just a touch over an inch and a half. So I'm going to inch and five eighths. And uh, with my uh, with my little sled here, um, I've got markings here for quite a bit of uh, measurements already, but I do not have one for inch and five eighths. Make that mark. And basically, I've got this thing designed so that the blade, um, the left side of the blade is almost right up against this uh, kerf. So if I measure from this kerf over and I cut a piece, I'm going to get exactly that length. So let's see, we go inch and 5 eighths. What's actually, I do have an inch and 5 eighths marking. Now, I'm going to put a stop block here. Just like so. Okay, so I've got this stop block an inch and five eighths, and I'm going to clamp this in place. And this is going to allow me to have very consistent cuts, extremely, uh, almost perfect cuts every single time, and it'll give me these sections that I need. So what I'll do is I'll just put it there, run it through the blade, pull it back where. I, I could safely pull the piece out, pull it out, and so I'll cut uh, eight of these, and then we'll cut eight more of these, but we need to include the thickness of the material, and we know that this is just a touch over a half an inch, so we'll compensate for that. So let's cut these up real quick. Okay, and that gives us eight blocks, perfectly sized. That's exactly what we needed. So, okay, now, like I said, we need to cut some more of these blocks, but we now need them to be, uh, let's see here, I'm just verifying this. So this is actually, this piece is a little under a half inch. Um, so we'll go an uh, inch and five eighths plus, um, Inch and five eighths, about the two and an eighth. Two and an eighth will be just fine, actually. So, again, uh, let's see, I've got two and a quarter marked off here, so I need to do a mark for two and an eighth. And let me clamp my block back. All right, now, eight of these. And then we have eight of the, so we've got eight of the short ones, eight, eight of the long ones. Alright, let me uh, reset up here and I'll show you how we're going to put these together. Okay, for assembly it's kind of more of the same. Gonna use glue, type on glue, brad nailer. This time I'm using a one inch brad. Uh, on the module assembly, I used a one and a quarter, I think, or one and a half. I uh, wanted a little more strength there. In this case, we don't really need as much strength as we just need the glue. Uh, we just need something to hold everything together while the glue's drying, if that makes any sense. So, so essentially what's going to happen is, so the reason one's longer than the other is we want to create a, we want to create a, a, a space that is even this way and this way and by overlapping this by that much we'll create that. And if I grab a, if I grab a leg you'll see, see how that fits in there. And there's a little gap but that's okay because um, when we go to put the legs in, we'll actually screw some screws in from the inside to hold the leg in place. So there's a lot of different methods to doing that. Uh, that's just the particular method I'm going to use for this layout uh, just because I want it to uh, be sturdy. And, uh, and at the same time, I, uh, don't really, um, I don't really need to take this apart multiple times. A lot of times these modules are built so that they can be um, taken apart and moved 
frequently, like if they're gonna go join up with another club or something like that. I'm not doing that. I'm building this to stay in place until the day where we do move, and then in that case, I will just remove the screws and um, take it apart. So, uh, <clears throat> just a nice little bead of glue. And again, uh, just like I did with the modules, I'm just using my thumbs to just kind of check that everything is lined up. And uh, I'm just going to shoot a couple, a couple nails, a couple brads. And we'll go through. Just like that. A little, little glue squeeze out there, not too bad on the inside. So there we go. So I just need to do uh, seven more of these. Okay, eight of them ready to go. Okay, and for the actual installation, you can see these are just going to go in here just like this. And uh, I can tell everything's pretty square because uh, I've got no gap here and no gap here, and everything seems to be seems to be sitting flat. I'm going to bring a leg in and just demonstrate. That's how the leg's going to go in there, just like that. So, I, uh, I debated whether I was going to nail these because uh, I didn't want to show, but then I realized I already have some nails showing on the front and back anyway, so I uh, don't see why I shouldn't. Um, what I am going to do though is I am going to glue here, here, and this bottom edge, so I'll get a nice glue connection between the sides and the top of the module. So, here we go. Now I'm going to go not as heavy on the glue just simply because I, I don't want to deal with any like major squeeze out inside of the uh, inside of the pocket so I'm gonna try to just kind of go light with the light with the glue and uh, I think that's gonna do really well actually okay and since I can look straight down and, and align the nail I can uh, nail this in without having to mark the module. There we go. All right, I just got to do uh, the other three and then uh, four on that module. Okay. That's all four. Let the glue dry on these. All right, and what I can show you is before I end the video, even though I'm not going to do this just yet because I'm waiting for the glue to dry, uh, I'm going to use some screws called SPAC screws. And what's nice about SPAC screws is, is that um, they are a uh, self-drilling type of screw. And I'll be able to shoot uh, those screws in with my drill driver or my impact driver. And uh, what they'll do is, they have a real broad head on them, and what they'll do is they'll pull against this plywood, but they'll also pull the leg tight to the pocket. And I won't do that on the inside, I don't want to do that on the outside, because one, I don't want the screw head shown, and two, um, I think it'll be uh, just as secure by doing it on the inside. Um, so I'm going to probably, uh, what I'll probably do is shoot two here, and then one in the center here. If I was to do two here and then two here, I'd have to kind of... Uh, strategically place them so that I don't have them running into each other, one going this way, one this way. And I think three is going to be plenty. This isn't a big module, it's not heavy. And I think having two here and one here is going to have these legs tight enough that I'm not going to see any kind of racking or anything like that. So I think that's going to do just fine. Okay, that's going to be it for this video. And uh, thanks for watching and uh, keep checking the channel for more uh, uh, videos pertaining to this project as well as some other projects I have going on. So thanks for watching and if you're not subscribed I would really appreciate the subscription to my channel. That way every time I post a video you'll get a notification that shows you that I have a new video up and you can watch it. And I uh, always appreciate comments and likes and thumbs ups and all that sort of thing. Um, this channel is not as big as my woodworking channel so I've been working on trying to build up uh, um, subscribers and, and viewership in this channel. So, every little bit helps. Thanks a bunch, and we'll see you next time. And where's my clamp?
Ah, there's my clamp. Be right back. 